Looks like I am live. So nice to see you. Now all I need is for Romaine to join. I think since at the beginning, people are watching like an ad spot, Romaine is not here yet. So I uh, will let you know for those of you who are watching this later on recorded, thank you for joining us for our live Google Hangout. Uh, you will see that uh, people have posted comments and everything. If you're watching this on YouTube, you just sort of watch the video and enjoy. You can join us Sundays at 4 p.m. Eastern time. You can look for the links on our uh, Facebook pages or on our Twitter. Uh, you should be following us there anyway. And of course, subscribe to us on YouTube. You'll also, if you're on YouTube, you can look at the bottom of the screen and you will see right on the screen a way, you just click that to go to the Google Hangouts. And even if you're not watching live, you can vote up or down your favorite things that you're seeing when you're watching live, you will be able to submit your questions um, and you can post them in advance. Just look for the Q&A button uh, on the Google Hangouts and it will show you that. Or while the show is going on, you just go right up to the top here, you'll see something that looks like a keypad and then you press that and it will take you into the Google Hangouts section. So you'll be able to see it for yourself. So, that's the excitement that I have for you. Our viewers have started to come in for the live broadcast. Hello, viewers. Welcome uh, to the live broadcast. Romaine has not joined us yet, but I have sent her a link and she will be with us soon. Uh, but I will say for those of you who are uh, with us and watching me live, hello, here I am inside my wrap room. Uh, be sure to post your questions using the Q&A feature uh, for you live viewers. Uh, you'll see the keypad up at the top of your screen if you are here inside the Google Hangouts. And just click on that. You'll see some of the questions that people have already asked. Actually, I think it's on this side for you, right? You'll see the questions that people have already asked and you can um, plus one up a question if you like it. Um, or you can ask your own question. I would just ask that everyone just ask one question because I still have to sort through all the questions that people send in. And uh, if people ask 10,000 questions, then I won't be able to answer all of them. All right, well, Romaine is not here yet. Oh, I did hear a ding. Is that Romaine joining us? God, I hope so. I honestly have no idea. We're still getting used to our program. What can I say? It's all brand new for us and for you. All right, well, since Romaine is not here, I guess I'll just have to tap dance and vamp away until she does. We have um, some pictures ready to go. <laughs> we'll start with our very first one, shall we? While we wait for Romaine. I'm telling you, I sent her a thing. I don't know where she is. I guess I will invite her again. Uh, we'll see, all right. Uh, let's go to our very first question from Tanya. I think you guys who are in the Google Hangout can see the question, but I'll read it for you anyway. Hello, Tanya. Hello. Uh, Tanya says, I love the DNR picture in the back. Was that always there and I missed it before? No, actually, <laughs> um, because Mike has the answer to that. Mike says, how cute you took down the clock and put up a pic of you and Ro. Uh, it is true, there used to be a clock there behind me. Um, and uh, after we left Sirius XM, they sent us all of our stuff. They actually sent all of my stuff to Romaine's house. But uh, so I haven't gotten any of my stuff yet. But um, they sent a box of pictures um, that we had hanging in the studio. And uh, when the box arrived, I knew immediately what it was because it was one of these flat boxes. Here's Romaine. Hello. <laughs> Finally, there you are. Sorry, I thought I, I thought I was on the right one, but then I wasn't, I guess. I don't know. I'm okay. a mess. Well, I'm glad you're here now. I was explaining about the picture, Romaine. Oh, look at that. There yeah. we are. So the box of pictures came to my house from the office. And uh, as soon as I saw the box, I knew it was full of pictures of us. And my first thought was um, the line from First Wives Club when Bette Midler walks into Goldie Hawn's apartment and she says, is this where your fan club meets? So I want you to know, this is where our fan club meets. Yay! Yay. All right, here we go. Uh, let's get into the questions, Romaine. We already have okay. a couple up. We have some people here. Romaine has got her weird 
shit on her face. Do you want to explain to everyone what that I is? I just felt like royalty today. So I put on a crown, thought some glasses might make me look a little smarter, and you always say I have a mustache, so I thought I'd fill it in a little bit. <laughs> She's got a mustache. I'm trying to be in disguise. <laughs> we I think it's funny. It's great, but we still know it's you. <laughs> So let's go to uh, Nathan's question. Nathan says, what ways have you looked into to monetize your broadcasting on the web? Well, if you popped into this video, there was an ad at the front of it. Please support the advertisers because, I mean, it's not, it's no real money at all. But we appreciate it anyway. Yeah. A little bit helps, um, for sure. Penny here, penny there. Yes, but mostly literally pennies. But it's something. It's better than nothing. And... Um, we're mostly doing these videos not to make money, but to just sort of keep in contact with everyone as we get our plans together for the future. Right, lady? Yes, we are. <laughs> we, want to, we want to stay in touch with the people. I want to reach out and touch you. You, right there, you. Okay. Uh, yes, Derek. Uh, you have something to say to me? My I don't have something to say to you. Oh, okay. Uh, I have something to say to the people who keep trying to call us. <laughs> call us? They don't seem to understand how this concept works, so they keep trying to- I don't understand to, like, how this concept works. They keep trying to Google voice call us. No, don't no. call us. That's not how this works. That's not how any of this so works. So how does it work, Derek? Because I'm confused. Well, it's too late now because anybody who's in here watching already knows how it works. Oh. But I could be tweeting while we're talking and I could tell those other dumb bitches how it works. Okay. All they have to do is click on the link. That we posted, right? Yes, to the Google event or go to our Facebook page. Or I'm sorry, not our, yeah, it's on our, the link is on our Facebook page. Okay, I'm going to tell them. I'm going to tell okay. those dumb bitches. And then the I'm video is just right there. Click the link. Just click the link. That's what I'm going to say. Good. They'll listen. Okay, yes, all right. Hopefully, and they will stop sending us, like, uh, incoming messages. Click the link in the DNR show Facebook. Page. Oh, there, I told them. Yeah, I can't believe this. All right, anyway. Yes, we have lots of customer support here to help you out. It's, ah, ah. It, it's the two of us. It's just the two of us. We can make it if we try. Right. We're trying. We're trying. We're failing, but we're trying. We really are. Next question. Okay, go. Heidi. Hi, Hi Heidi. Heidi. Uh, the thing I love about DNR is that you and Romaine said whatever you thought. Did either of you ever mentally censor yourself if you thought something would go too far? Um, I mean, for me, uh, I mean, not really in that sense because I didn't really ever say anything, I don't think, that bombastic. But um, if I thought my mother was listening, I always felt a little inhibited because I was like, oh, no, I don't want to say anything that will, you know, ruined me in the eyes of my own mother. But otherwise, no, I really didn't. Sometimes when we were talking about celebrities whose lives were messy, I would think to myself, what if they're in their car listening right now and they heard me talking about what a mess they are? And uh, that would make me feel bad a little bit. But then I thought, don't be a mess. What about you, Romaine? Um, I mean, I don't think I ever really censored myself. Perhaps on a case, like there were, okay, that's not true. Yes, I did. There were a few times when I would use other people's names, like um, the tree stump I never referred to by name, just because he doesn't deserve to have a name as far as I'm concerned. Um, so there were like little things like that, I guess, that I censored myself, but for the most part, no, I don't fucking care. I mean, I just say things the way I see them, the way I feel them. Very rarely would I censor myself, very, very rarely. All right, let's uh, go to our next question. I want to remind everyone, if you have joined us since we started taking questions and you're watching us live, uh, if you're inside, uh, if you're in YouTube, uh, you won't be able to ask a question, but there should be a little thing on the screen where you can click it to go into the Google Hangouts. And when you get in there, uh, you can, oh, where is the thing? Right up here, you'll see a little thing that looks like a keypad. You uh, click that, and then you can ask questions uh, during the Q&A. 
like our next one that we have here from Lee. You can also vote up the questions if you like them and you want them to rise to the top. Lee's question is, uh, I would like to see Katie on the Sunday Fun Day. Do you think you could make that happen? I think so. Uh, we, haven't, we haven't asked Katie, uh, but I don't think she would have a problem with being in our Sunday Fun Day broadcast. Yeah, I think she would do it. I think she'd love it, actually. I'm surprised. I'm surprised she hasn't been uh, banging down the door and saying, let me in, let me in. <laughs> uh, but I did, I did have um, drinks with Katie uh, this week on uh, Thursday night, I think it was. I don't remember. I was in the city for a TV show that I was taping. And I did, I did have, um, I did have drinks with her, and she's doing really well. So it was, it was just nice to see her face. I can't believe how quickly I started missing it. Oh, we miss Katie. I know. Here's Eric's question. Can Romaine show her beautiful and lovely face sans a coutrement? They love it when I speak French. Oh, yeah, you do it so well. I do. I did. I took off all of my mustache and stuff. See? Yeah. Uh, I would do that myself, but actually, I played around with it the other day, but I couldn't figure out how to turn it off. So you hit When you pick something, Derek, it kind of glows white a little bit, and you just press it again, and it goes away. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> you too. I wish I could just press the little button and you'd go away sometimes, but I won't. How's my lighting, by the way? I worked really hard today. Look, Do I you like, like my lighting. Is it better? Uh, the lighting is good. The location is good. You got a little art in the background. I do. You know, this is a $25,000 painting behind me. Isn't my it gorgeous? God. That's oh, right. $25,000 painting. Not mine. $25,000 painting. I stole it from my brother. I was going to say, if things don't turn around soon, you'll be living in that painting. Oh, I'll be selling this bitch. Don't even <laughs> <Right>. think twice. <laughs> okay, here's a question from Gail. Gail says, doesn't AOL have radio stations? Uh, how about talking to them about one for your show? Uh, Romaine and I are exploring every possible avenue that we can to keep the show going. It's why we are doing these uh, video chats once a week uh, through the end of July uh, to keep everyone abreast of what we're doing, remind them that we are still alive and super fun. You said abreast. I know. <laughs> I mean, can't let go for one second because she's like a nine year old boy. Uh, but yeah, we're, we're exploring every avenue, right, Romaine? Yes, we are. We're looking at a lot of different avenues. Um, and, uh, you know, we welcome ideas. I mean, ideas are always welcome because you guys might know uh, where you're listening to shows that maybe we're unaware of. Uh, but we are certainly looking at a lot of different avenues to try to do the show on. Right. Yes. But we appreciate all of your suggestions for sure. Oh, yeah. Definitely. It helps. Yes, it does help. It helps give us ideas. Okay, Tyler has a question. Uh, Tyler says, now that we have marriage equality, if I was married in a state where it was legal and I live in one that it previously was not, do I have to file something with my state? Uh, Tyler, if you're in a state that just very recently, like in the last three days, got marriage equality, uh, I would suspect that your uh, state attorney general will very soon be giving out some kind of guidelines. You'll probably have to take a copy of your existing marriage license from another state uh, to your county courthouse, something like that. But uh, I would just look at your own, uh, your state attorney general, whatever your your state's official websites will have information about it under the under the marriage stuff for sure. At the very least, you'll probably have just have to go down with your existing marriage license to uh, the county courthouse where they issue marriage licenses. Um, and they'll probably have some kind of form where you just show them your existing license and then they'll, they'll do something for you there. And I don't know if it'll cost an extra fee or not, but it might. I didn't have to do anything. When we, when we got married in New York and we came back to New Jersey, we didn't have to do anything because really the only thing it impacted, um, was our taxes and our tax guy didn't, he's like, it's fine. He didn't need to do anything. So I mean, maybe when you get like a new driver's license or something, but I'm trying to think of like why they would even need to see it. And I can't think of a reason because it's really more about taxes than anything, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I think if you're going to be filing your taxes jointly and that kind of thing, um, and they, you know, some people may feel better having a marriage license issued inside their own state 
in case they need it for whatever things they need. Um, I guess if you want to go and change your name on your marriage li- or on your uh, driver's license or something, uh, your state may require you to have uh, a marriage license from that state. I don't know. Uh, it's I'm sure that there will be information about it, and m- almost every state has. Um, like a number you can call or somebody that you can ask about it. So, uh, but I would say, you know, you have like a month until the U S Supreme court certifies their ruling and then States will roll out their guidelines and everything. All of that's going to take a few days to weeks, but probably almost every state will issue some kind of guidelines in the next week or so about how they'll be handling that. So I would check that. All right. Bob, Bob has a question. How many souls are booked for the November Derek and Romaine cruise. Poor unfortunate souls. How many, Derek? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I actually I have not counted in a little while. We had uh, we had about 120 uh, before this happened, and then we've had a bunch of people who have signed up since then. I actually haven't done like a current new active count, but we've had lots of people who have said that they want to come uh, on the cruise this fall in case those, nice those are the smart listeners the ones who are like yeah sign me up sign me up because this could be the last one yeah <laughs> well the other thing is that the ship is not sold out but um most of our listeners are on deck 11 which is uh the deck, party deck. <laughs> that's the party deck that's the fun deck almost everyone is there it also has a nice selection of different kinds of cabins there uh, so there's a little something for everyone but um it's almost completely sold out of mini suites. It's almost completely sold out of balconies on that deck. Uh, I think there's one studio cabin left. It might be gone already. Uh, it's out of ocean view rooms. It's been out of those for a while. Um, and there's some inside cabins that are left for sure. And then a couple of like suites, but in general, if you want to be on deck 11 where everyone is, you got to get in there fast. Um, but I mean, there's other space available on the ship and other places, but Romain and I are the ones who have to walk around and deliver things to your room. So we'd prefer it if you were all close together. Thanks. Yes. But yes, there's still plenty of room on the cruise. DerekandRomain.com has all the information. Um, and uh, you can look for it there. DerekandRomain.com slash cruise. Yeah. But if you just yes. go to our regular website, it's right there. Don't delay. Get booking right now. Derek loves doing all that work. <laughs> Don't it is fair right. work, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Erica says, can we get one rant from each of you? I miss Monday evening rants. Romaine, do you have something you want to rant about? Oh, fuck yes, I do. It's kind of a related, like a critter chat related fucking rant. So Romy has been waking up every morning going, mommy, mommy, oh my God, the most exciting thing. There's squirrels outside my window. Squirrels on my motherfucking roof. I am not happy about this. I am not excited about this. I want to kill the motherfucking squirrels on the motherfucking roof before they find their way into my house, which, by the way, they fucking will because they're little fucking fuckers. So, yeah, I'm not so happy about that. And, by the way, my wife says I'm not allowed to go up onto the roof because I might fall off of said roof. And, by the way, do I even have health insurance? I'm not even sure because I'm unemployed. So, fuck you, squirrels. Fuck you. Okay. Well, I will tell you, I also have a bit of critter chat for you. So I have a, a um, composting barrel in my backyard and I was on my way out there. It's mostly filled with banana peels and coffee grounds, but I'm on my way out there. Uh, I'm not a healthy eater. And uh, as I'm walking out there, there's something on the lawn and I look down and it's a dead Robin. Oh, that's sad. Feet up like this on his back. And so I was like, oh no, did a cat get it? Cause you know, the robins are ground uh, feeders, you know, they're pulling um, worms out of the ground and that kind of thing. And the cats can hide in the bushes and leap out. So anyway, it says there, and I was like, oh, well, I'm on my way into this city. It was on Friday. I was like, well, I'm on my way into the city cause I'm having dinner with uh, Mike, uh, my roommate and Adam. And, uh, so I was like, I'll have to get out here with a shovel and you know, fling it off into the bushes later. But I was like, oh, I hate losing a robin because they're, you know, that's a, that's a good bird. Anyway, 
get out there on Saturday with my shovel, get out there, it's gone. And I know it was dead, it was very dead. And so I don't know, I don't know what carried it off. A bird, like a hawk came down and ate it, or, or a cat dragged it away. I don't even know, but it's not there anymore. Be grateful, be grateful that it's not there anymore. Yes. Gross. Very I'm gross. Grateful. I would not want a dead bird in my yard. I had one already this season. Maybe this is signs of the end times, Derek. God, I hope not. <laughs> Me too. That would be bad. I don't want the end times to be coming to you and I. Oh, wait, they already did. I think that people who are very conservative probably feel like they are living in the end times now that there's gay marriage everywhere. Uh, on that tip, we have another question from one of our listeners. Uh, remember, you can ask your own question or vote up other people's questions if you're watching live in the Google Hangouts. Uh, just look for the thing that looks like a keypad up here. Uh, click on that, and then you can ask your questions or vote up other questions that you like. Uh, we'll take the most popular questions and bubble up to the top. There are lots of questions, so here we go. William says, I came out to my family six years ago to a, a supportive family. My father has since changed his stance and said he can no longer tolerate what I am doing. Uh, I don't know what you're doing, but I assume <laughs> he's sticking his dick in someone's ass, Derek. That's um, what he's doing. I hope that there's not more to that story. But anyway, okay. <laughs> Any suggestions on how to keep a relationship with someone who isn't supportive of my life? Thanks. Well, look, this is uh, this is really tough, especially because they were supportive and then they weren't supportive. Um, it sounds like something happened to change their tune. I think it's worth exploring asking why like why he changed his mind what it was that changed his mind uh and then you have to reconcile for yourself what kind of relationship that you want to have with your family it's tough with parents because you don't always have lots of time to work things out with people sometimes you just have to make peace with what you got um especially with older parents because you know there aren't too many shopping days left before christmas you know what i'm saying i do yeah uh, so, I mean, that's my feeling is, look, it's your family. You have to make a decision with you and your own dad, you know, what you're willing to do. I feel like with siblings or nieces or nephews, where if you feel like you have a little more time, you can be a little scrappier with them. With a parent, you got to choose your quality time wisely and how you want to spend it. And I think that that's a thing that you should say to your dad. Look, how much time have we got together? Really? Look how old you are. So, oh! Because that's going to win him over. <laughs> do you want to do you want to spend the last ten minutes we have fighting, or can we just make peace? Really, because your life's not going to change, and once he's gone, your life is going to continue on exactly the way that it is. So it really is up to him and how he wants to spend his last remaining days. Although you know, like my dad, when he was sixty, he said he was middle aged, and I got to use the postcards in the edge line. Uh, really, how many one hundred and twenty year old men do you know? Uh, and then he died very suddenly five years later, but he believed he was middle-aged. So I'm just saying, none of us ever knows when the end is coming. So you got to make peace with people while you have your chance. Romaine, what do you have to say on this? Because you have to deal with this with your mother-in-law. Uh, I mean, well, she's a pretty extreme case of someone who is not willing to change or even um, have an open dialogue about things. So, you know, in that sense, it's a little challenging uh, with her because... There's really nothing we can do. But I do think that if you have a parent who was supportive and then now maybe isn't supportive, the reality is, you know, when you say, what changed? Well, what changed is he probably got a boyfriend. And then the reality of, oh, my God, my son's a homosexual is actually a reality versus this kind of uh, thing that was known but wasn't actually seen. Um, so I think, yeah, I think it's I think it's certainly worth finding out, um, you know, why the sudden change in tune and then just say, hey, listen, you know, I love you. I think you love me. This is going to hinder our relationship. And, you know, say, I'll give you time to deal with your feelings on this. Maybe suggest going to P flag or something like that. But, you know, time is short. Derek's right. Time is short. You don't have time to waste. So there's no sense in, you know, arguing over these things. You know, the only thing you can do is love the people in your life and hope that they will love you back. And sometimes they will and sometimes they won't. And if they won't, I don't have a problem walking away personally. Um, but that's that's me. All righty. Let's go to our next question. 
It's from a new listener, Stanton in Austin. Oh, no. Stanton says, who are you people, and how did you get this number? I assume the number in question is 72, which is how old you are. Ooh, mean. Why are you so mean to Stanton? I could have given his real age, 75. That's not nice. We love Stanton. We love Stanton. (laughs) I hear Stanton is on um, Periscope. Did you hear that? Have you seen that? Yes, other people were asking about that. They're like, did you see Stanton's Periscope? I'm like, not yet, but I am very anxious to check it out. Me too. I can't wait to see how entertaining he is on Periscope. God, I hope it is. He better not suck. Chris says, it's so so good that you're both doing these videos for us. Thank you. You're welcome, Chris. You're welcome. Glad we could be here. Yes. In some way, shape, or form. Timothy's question is, Derek, since we have marriage equality across the nation, have you and Donnie set a wedding date? (laughs) Oh, that's funny. (laughs) Yeah, Derek, have you? No, I'm not marrying Donnie. I thought you loved Donnie. I do, but platonically. Oh, are you sure? Um, you so happy when he's sure. around? No. No. Okay. Gotta take my word for it. Dale has a question for you, Romaine. Romaine, can you talk about the show you taped on Thursday and where it will air? Oh, uh, the TV show. I can. Uh, it's going to air on Bravo and on Lifetime, I think in July. And I believe, oh, hold on, I gotta look on my phone. I believe the show is called the Strictly Brief. Strictly Brief, maybe? I can't remember. Is it about underwear? No, no it's not about, un- is it about underwear? Um, shit. Now I don't know where I put the phone number for this place. I don't oh, know your life. I'll find the name of it because I, can, I honestly can't remember what it's called. It's like the Strictly Brief or Briefly Strictly uh, Security Brief. It's called Security Brief. <laughs> um, and uh, so that's the name of the show. It's a new show. It's evidently coming out on Bravo and it's going to be airing on Lifetime. And um, yeah, it's the host of the show is some guy named Paul. And it's a really great show. And I actually really liked it. It seems very gay positive. So um, that was the name of the show. And I actually had fun doing it, but you know, it's TV. That stuff is always so crazy, filming that kind of crap. Um, but uh, yeah, it was one of those things that just kind of came out of nowhere. Like, hey, can you do this thing on Thursday? And I was like, and this is on Wednesday. And I'm like, yeah, sure, I got time. <laughs> and then I had to go get a haircut because my hair was a mess. Oh God, I was a mess. Derek, if you're gonna see me that day, I was a hot fucking mess. Oh man. Yeah. I've seen you messy many, many times. No, nah, I was. This was extra special levels of messy, but I did it. I got there. I even wore heels. What? Yeah, that's right. <sighs> Shut up. <laughs> You're an asshole. You know that? You're a fucking asshole. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, let's go to the next question. This one is from Kenny. Okay. <laughs> Kenny says, I pay for a DNR podcast. Is that a viable thing for any existing shows? I realize it's a numbers game. Uh, Kenny, it is a numbers game. And, you know, as Romaine and I have uh, mentioned, we're exploring every single option, whether it's us doing some kind of standalone thing, whether it's uh, partnering with an existing company, whether it's terrestrial radio, whatever, whatever the options are. We're looking at every single possible option that is available to us. And we will leave no stone unturned. No, but I will say this, because I know a lot of people have been asking this question. Right now, the most valuable thing that Derek and Romaine listeners can do for us is to follow us on our various social networking. So things like our YouTube, the number of views we have, the number of followers we have on Twitter and Facebook and things like that, all of that is really going to matter when we're out there trying to sell ourselves to Uh, some of these different places because it is in fact a numbers game and the more numbers we can show of hardcore loving fans the better it is for us Um, so that is one way you definitely can help us agreed so follow us on uh, Twitter like us on Facebook subscribe to our YouTube channels 
and watch our YouTube videos. We have lots of videos between the two of us now. Okay, here we go with Scott. Scott's question is, was there ever an interview you did on the show that one of you were expecting to suck and then you were completely surprised by how much you enjoyed it? I well, have one that immediately jumps to mind to me. Okay. I was gonna say, I think whenever we would have like a penthouse girl or something like that come in, 99% of the time you were really sh unsure of what you were gonna get. Because sometimes the girls were amazing and most of the time they were just okay. But you wanted to kind of try to have some fun and you know, I always enjoyed seeing the pretty ladies. But I have to say the one when she first came in that I expected to suck was Mary Jean, who uh, has become one of our very favorites, at least for me, one of my very favorites. Um, she's the boobs it is, uh, and it's worth it. I tell you what, that first time she came in the studio, I could not stop laughing. She was a fucking ball, and I absolutely loved her. And I, I would never have expected that interview to be as much fun as it was. Uh, I mean, I agree on the Mary Jean front, and uh, Lainey, who books the or booked the uh, penthouse. Uh, pets on our show she was really mindful she would only book people who had some kind of personality and whatever on the show and i mean i know it's a lot of gay guys listening to our show sometimes they loved it sometimes they didn't but it's like any guest it's real it's the mood they're in it's sometimes you get lucky uh mary jean i think she's a lovely person and she's also naturally very funny uh there was a lot to like there one person i don't want to say that i thought i was going to hate um, but when I did the interview with Luke McFarlane, I had never watched Brothers and Sisters. Um, and for whatever reason, Romaine couldn't do the interview. And so I came in to do the interview. And I thought, well, you know what? The gay guys would be thrilled because he's super hot. And Romaine had talked about how hot he was on the show. And I was like, well, you know what? Even though it's radio, people like hot guys. So I'm like, all right, well, I will come in for the hot guy interview with Luke McFarlane. And he was delightful so handsome and just really charming and sweet and lovely, all those things. And so I was actually, uh, I wasn't expecting that. Um, and then it turned out he listened to the show and that was like, wait, what? what? And uh, so like, that crazy oh, period, like, oh, man listens to our show. <laughs> yeah, I know well, how that was. I mean, this happened. Uh, okay. First of all, you have to understand this about like publicists and things. So publicists, when they're trying to get somebody on your show, they'll say, oh, they love your show. And 99% of the time, they are blowing sunshine up your skirt, and it's not true. They've never heard of you. They don't know what's going on. But, uh, you know, and so whenever anyone would say that, um, we were always like, mm, yeah, right. Like that happened with Alan Ball. They told us, oh, Alan oh. Ball, this is your show. That's and true. Alan, totally Alan, with Alan. Alan Ball, who won an Oscar for American Beauty. Alan Ball, who created uh, True Blood. That Alan Ball? He loves our show. He listens. Yeah. To our show. No, I don't believe that. And it literally wasn't until he got on the air with us and he went, "Hey, bitches!" I was like, "Oh my god, he actually does like he does listen well, to our show." What the well, hell? We, but we tried to book him on the show, and I wasn't going to be able to be there. And he's like, "No, no, I'll wait until both of them are there." Right. Because he really did want to be on the show with both of us, and it was it was a shocker. <laughs> so, but a good one. <laughs> Yeah. So anyway, so I, I mean, I'm always surprised. I mean, I don't want to say I'm always surprised when people listen to our show, but like when people that we like that we see on TV or that we think are famous and then it's like they listen, that's like a weird thing to me. I guess it would be like if you uh, went to the movies and saw a movie and then like Ryan Reynolds was in the movie and then he went out into the lobby and then Ryan Reynolds was there and he was like, hey, he called you by name. It was like, so how'd you like the movie? You'd find that strange, right? Yes. Yeah. That's how I consider this experience of like, no, 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 I'm, I'm the fan of you. You can't be the fan of me. That's very strange. No, that's not, the, that's not how this works. Okay. That's how I feel about that. No, I agree. Although I really wish there, I still am wishing there was a Survivor producer that was a fan of our show so that I could be on that fucking show. Oh, so disappointing. Ah! Okay. Here's our next question. This one's from Brian. Brian says, can we expect any guests to the show in the coming weeks? Maybe Donnie, Michelle Collins, or Hedda Lettuce could join the chat, just throwing out some suggestions. Well, I'm sorry that Romaine and I are not enough for you. Yeah, why aren't we enough? 
Are it's we not like you're going to listen to us every single day right now. I mean, hello. Yeah, I would think after your first full week of not being able to hear our show at all, you'd all be like twitching like junkies, like, eh, eh, I gotta have it. But apparently they're ready for whatever else to join us. I but guess. R Romaine and I will work on that. Uh, it was an impromptu thing to have Adam Sank join us. We hadn't expected that we were gonna do that with Adam. Um, and we'll talk to some other people. Not everybody wants to like get on camera on the middle of a Sunday and uh, hang out on the internet. but. We'll look into it. We'll see what we can do. Sure we will. I don't know. Maybe someone will join us. Do we still have any friends left, Derek? Yes, one or two. Okay, good. <laughs> Here's a question from Rick. Okay. Rick says, I'm going to marry my longtime boyfriend and not sure what my employer is going to say when I try to put him on my insurance. I live in Florida and the company is located in Ohio. Just looking for some thoughts. Well, um, I mean, uh, first of all, you can legally get married. And uh, if you have been at the company and they haven't said anything about you up to this point, uh, I mean, if you're really concerned, uh, I would ask an attorney. I'm not an attorney. Romain is not an attorney. Uh, but you know, the U.S. Supreme Court just said that you have a legal right to get married. And marital status is a protected class in this country. Not being gay is not protected, but being married is. Uh, as long as you don't work for a uh, religious institution, if you work for like a publicly traded company or something, uh, it probably should not be an issue just because if they were to uh, come after you at, for whatever reason now because you got married, um, you could argue in court that they were discriminating against you because of your marital status as opposed to you being gay. Um, but uh, honestly, if you're that concerned about it, I would I would talk to a lawyer or, you know, I don't know. I would look around on like a, on a website like glassdoor.com and see what other employees at the company have said, if there's anything in there about like being gay or gay discrimination or anything in there. Just but in Derek, um, don't you think they should also look in the employee handbook that they have for their company to see if sexual orientation is a protected class by their company? I mean, a lot of companies do protect from that with their, their hiring and things like that. So it is worth a gander if you haven't looked at it in a while, um, you know, just to see where your company stands on those things. Also, the HRC Equality Index might have your company listed there as well if it's a big enough company um, to see where they rate. Um, that might give you a pretty good idea of whether the company is uh, gay friendly or not. True. Uh, very good advice, Romaine. On that tip, Wood Ward says, uh, Derek, what are your thoughts about the Supreme Court decision? Any comments about Justice Kennedy's opinion? Well, I did a, um, a very quick periscope about it, which you can check out on my uh, YouTube channel under my Scrum archive. Um, but, uh, no, I mean, it's very gratifying and it's a very sweeping decision. And I think that, um, in the future, you'll probably see federal judges citing the decision in other, uh, gay uh, discrimination cases. Um, cause I think that it does, it does open the door for other gay protections. It doesn't explicitly say that gays are protected in other spheres, but, you know, there was a case, uh, people have been talking about the um, the uh, Lawrence versus Texas case from 2003 and the Windsor case in 2013. In this case, it's sort of the three big gay rights cases. But Romaine will remember um, that back in 1992, Colorado passed something called Amendment 2, uh, which was a, um, it was a state amendment that barred local, um, uh, towns and counties from making uh, anti-discrimination ordinances for gay people. Basically, just right. if people want to discriminate against gay people, the cities and uh, towns and counties can't stop them from doing that in Colorado. And gay people were obviously very upset about this. They were very worried about this becoming a nationwide thing. And it went to the U.S. Supreme Court in 1995, 96, something like that. And uh, I think Kennedy wrote that opinion too and struck it down. And that was sort of the first glimmer of hope that gay people had from the Supreme Court uh, because the previous sort of big gay case had been Bowers versus Hardwick, which was a sodomy case 
1986 that upheld bans on sodomy um, in states. That was a five to four decision that the swing vote in that case afterward regretted his vote. Um, but uh, anyway, that was the first sort of sign that the Supreme Court might be more willing to uh, look favorably on uh, LGBT rights uh, in the future. And even though there were other cases after that, uh, like the uh, James Dale case, the Boy Scout case that, uh, that we lost in the LGBT community in front of the Supreme Court, um, it did sort of set the stage for a lot of the cases that we've seen since then in the last 20 years. So I think that um, based on that, the Amendment 2 case, and then the more recent cases uh, that we have won, I think that there's definitely five justices and maybe more um, that would not be in favor of gays being discriminated against in things like housing and employment and uh, like ado especially adoption for married couples uh, because they are legally married, they shouldn't be barred. You can't say one married couple can't adopt when another married couple can because then again, you're discriminating uh, uh, against them based on their marital status by not treating them equally uh, in that way. So I think that there's, it opens the door for uh, more better things, more comma better, since somebody bitched me, some grammar police person bitched me about <laughs> more better the other day. Oh, that's not good. No. Derek, about grammar. I am. All right. Speaking of language, um, I.O. Leva says, if you guys get a new show on terrestrial radio, will Remain be able to not say fuck or cunt? Good question. I would like to think that I could do a show without swearing. But it would be hard. But in all fairness, I don't think I swear nearly as much as I used to on the air. I mean, Derek would know better than I would because I stopped paying attention, but I feel like my mouth is not quite as bad as it used to be. I feel like it used to be much worse. Derek, what say you? I think that the casual F-bombs are fairly frequent. Uh, I think that the graphic content of like, let me have a 20 minute long discussion with you about what's happening inside my vagina, I think that has tapered back. But I think that you can't even hear yourself when you say fuck. I mean, that's probably true. I wish I could say it wasn't, but you're probably right, because I, I do use the F word a lot. A lot. It's, it's really just ingrained in who I am. Um, but I feel like I could. I feel like I could eradicate it. Yeah. Or at the very least, that's what the delay button is for. You just dump it. Dump, dump, dump. True. Also, you have to keep in mind, when Donnie went to uh, do that morning show, he was so, he had only spent a year or whatever on our show and he had to dump himself out like two or three times that first week he was on the air in exactly. that Jersey Shore show. Uh, it is hard if you are used to it in real life. You see, even see on network TV, uh, like Whoopi Goldberg is always like, like a real close to swearing because she swears in real life. Uh, and so for some people who like to swear, it's, it can be hard, for sure. Okay, Mark has another question. Mark says, Romaine, if you can't manage to get cast on Survivor or The Amazing Race, would you consider sending in an audition to Naked and Afraid? Hell no, I would not. First of all, no one wants to see this naked. No one. Not even my fucking wife. So no, that would never happen. Also, I couldn't survive. I've got no, I've got no survival skills. I don't even like to camp. No, the answer is no. I will never do that show because those bitches look like they're gonna die, every last one of them. The only upside to doing Naked and Afraid, and there is only one, is that I would get real skinny. But other than that, no, 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 no. Okay, Romaine says no. Here's our next question. Uh, Jordan says, why did you guys never tell us how hot Katie is? I had no idea. We told you how hot she was. We used to talk about it. She's a hot lady. Actually, almost all the girls who've worked on the show over the years have been very hot. You should have seen Weenie. She was hot, too. And Jana Banana's really hot. They're, it was a little slice of heaven for me up there. And Whitney. Oh, who Whitney? Oh, she was dreamy. Yeah. Oh. We, had, 
We've had many attractive people, men and women, who have worked on our show. We've been very grateful about that. Hashtag blessed. Kate <laughs> says, uh, thank you for doing this. I miss your broadcast each night. It's still such a bummer, uh, but totally glad to be following you here and staying connected. What are your options of the future? Everything. Nothing is out of bounds. We're looking at everything. Podcast, terrestrial radio. Hell, we'd even consider TV. There's nothing we won't consider. If it pays us, <laughs> and it better pay us decently, because mama, mama has a Camaro to buy. <laughs> or to pay for, I should say. Yeah, pay for. Pay for, yeah. Okay. Betsy says, so what can the fans do to help you the most? Be honest. Uh, I'll start, Dirk. I, I mean, really, the first and foremost thing, we've said it already, follow us on our social networking sites. Um, you know, that is, that's the most important thing. Make sure you're actively engaged in the show. And make sure you're still telling your friends who listen to the show that we're still here. We haven't died. I think that was the most upsetting thing for me um, after the show was canceled is it was like – People just thought we were going to die and that we were just gone forever and it was never going to come back. And oh, it was horrible. Um, so I want people to know we're not dead. We're still very much alive. We're still looking to do something new. And we will keep looking for that until we find something. Um, but, you know, I think the most important thing is to follow such social networking. And, I mean, I know a lot of you have been very supportive in a lot of different ways. Um, certainly it's been very sweet and, and all that. But really the most important way you can support us is by – following us on social networking and supporting whatever ventures we decide to do next. Yeah, I agree with Romaine. Please uh, follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook and uh, subscribe to us on YouTube. And when we know what we're doing, uh, we will let you know. And then please tell everyone, you know, everybody. I, I, yeah. <laughs> I mean, as I said before, like it doesn't cost anything to retweet something or share something on Facebook um, and so, and it will mean a lot to us because it will help get the word out, especially whatever new venture we're doing, we're going to have to spend some time getting the word out and we will depend on, um, our hardcore, uh, people who have been with us a long time, our friends, we will depend on you, our friends, uh, to do, to help us out here. So please friend help us. Yeah. And, and I know that many of you are enjoying the Google Hangouts that we're doing on Sundays, and these are great. But also remember, Derek and I are both doing individual periscopes almost every day throughout the week. Um, so that's a great place to follow us, too. We also put our Periscope videos up on our YouTube channel for people who um, can't figure out how to get the Periscope app on their phones or their iPads. I know it's a little tricky. Uh, but you can also watch us on, uh, on YouTube every day as well. Yes. All right. Here's our next question from William. Derek, what is it like to be young and beautiful and to have a, that great head of hair? Oh. Uh, come on. <laughs> what kind of bullshit question is that? I don't know. The moderator picked it. That's bullshit. Bullshit. <laughs> That's bullshit. Uh, I, it's glorious. What can I say? Okay, John. Uh, John says, hi, Derek and Romaine. I'm not sure if you already addressed this but why will you only be doing these video chats for a limited time? Okay. Um, well, I'll just say that um, Romaine and I, uh, well, first of all, we were very surprised when our show got canceled because we were not expecting it, as I'm sure many of you were very surprised when you got in your car, boat, and airplane and our show wasn't there anymore. Uh, and so we were not <laughs> making plans for the future. We very much enjoy doing our show at Sirius XM, and we had planned to stay there for a very long time. Forever, they would have let us. But uh, basically what we did is Romaine and I sat down, and we both said, look, um, you know, we'll give this a month to figure out what our options are, probably because we had to make a decision about this cruise next summer if we were going to continue to do this Alaska cruise in uh, the summer of 2016. And really, we both felt like, we have to give people at least a year's notice. Alaska cruises are a little more expensive. Um, uh, logistically, it's harder. People need to plan ahead. It's also during summer, so a lot of people who would go with us, it would be their big summer vacation. Maybe they have kids or they teach or whatever it is. And so they like to make their plans far in advance. And so because of that, we felt, all right, well, that's really our deadline to make some kind of decision of if the show is going to move forward and if it is 
what it's going to be like. So in doing that, I came up with the idea of doing these every week until that period so that we would have an opportunity to stay in contact with everyone every week, let people know what was happening. If there were any new updates that we could let people know about. And, uh, and then we would have some kind of final answer by the end. Now, whatever we end up doing, it could be something where Romaine and I keep doing these. If the audience for them grows week after week and people really like this, um, we could do more of this. I know that when you listen, you don't really get the full flavor of us. You don't get to see my gay hands in the air and what have you. <laughs> Maybe you like that. So I I'm not saying we won't continue it past that time period, but we basically decided to make this commitment to each other and to you um, that we would commit to this time period uh, so that you would all know what to expect. Anything else you want to say on that, Romaine? No, I mean, I think that's exactly right. I mean, you know, we have to figure stuff out for ourselves, obviously. And, you know, we wanted to make sure that we stayed connected with you so we could keep you guys all updated on what was going on and, and where we were at with things. And um, so, yeah, I agree. You know, a month is a good amount of time to commit to. I may have to take some time out to Colorado uh, after a month um, to see my family and to possibly look for some stuff out there. So... You know, a month seems like the fair amount of time to commit to this for now. And again, Derek's right. You know, if things start progressing in the way we, we hope that they will, then, yeah, we might continue these until we land wherever it is we're going to land. And um, and then we'll, we'll change things up again. We'll see. Who knows? I don't know. Okay. Uh, apparently, I've been getting text messages that I didn't realize I was getting from Oops. Chris in Pittsburgh. Oh. I asked if she was in. You know, lady, as a gay guy, I'll tell you if you have to ask. <laughs> well, because it didn't... Ugh, anyway, I was having trouble in the beginning. I was here, but then I wasn't here, and I don't know. Here's my next question. Okay. Rose just hung over from last night. Too much Firefly, says Mike. I didn't have... Well, okay. I did... <laughs> I was a little out of control last night. You... I bet you didn't see my Periscope, but I was drinking some moonshine... It started early, early in the day, like two o'clock in the afternoon. I went over to my friend's house and uh, we were supposed to be having like a barbecue type thing. And then I don't know what it, I don't know if it was just the depression or a need to vent. And I don't know, maybe it was because it's Pride weekend. I was drinking like a crazy person yesterday and the night ended with moonshine and people wearing masks. It was. Uh, my periscopes are a little crazy sometimes. <laughs> you really don't know what to expect because honestly, I don't know what to expect. <laughs> but yes, hungover. Yes. Okay. Uh, Michael has a question. He says, will you be able to do future DNR cruises with the serious affiliation or was there never a serious affiliation? Uh, there was never a serious affiliation. Our cruise uh, was a separate thing that we did during our, our own time. Uh, and so there isn't a, there isn't an issue with continuing the cruise related to uh, Sirius XM. Yeah, I mean, one thing I will say about Derek and I is we are very entrepreneurial. Is that the way you say that word? I don't know. I think I fucked it up. Anywho, uh, we definitely uh, have always been looking for new and exciting things that we could do in addition to the show. And, uh, you know, Derek came up with this cruise idea. And I he's always trying to convince me to do shit. And I'm always like, this is going to suck. But then it never does. And then I always have to say, you're right. And then he's like, told you so, told you so. I hate him. Um, but this is one of those things that we, you know, Derek said, let's try to do this thing. And I was like, okay, I guess, whatever. And then I loved it. And um, we kept it going. And so, yeah, it's something we've done on our own. And it's one of those things that I don't know about Derek, but I certainly take a lot of pride in because I think that the listeners who come on the cruises with us have really enjoyed themselves. And I feel like we've created an experience um, that you can't get anywhere else. You can only get this Derek and Romaine experience on one of our cruises. Uh, and that is, that's, it's really unique and really cool and something I take a lot of pride in. Me too. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> we did have a question from uh, Mike. I can't find it now uh, because there are so many questions. Shut up. Shut up. What the hell is that, Romaine? I have dogs and they were barking. I'm sorry. This is what happens when you broadcast from home. 
And you told me I had to switch my room because my room last week was a depressing room and I had to get better lighting. So I had no choice but to come downstairs where the dogs are. It was depressing. I know. I'm trying. I'm making an effort. <laughs> and you know I hate being on video, but I'm trying very it's hard. It's very sad. It is. Okay, Mike had a question about um, who sent out the tweet as DNR show. And I assume it was either Romaine or it went out automatically, but it did not go out in English. I think it went out in Klingon. What? What tweet? I don't know anything about this tweet. Go. Take a look. Wait, let me put it up so the camera can see it. My camera can't see it. Well, if you stop talking, then you can see it, but it this will. It's blurry. Well, I'm getting as close as I can. Oh, but... God. I'm just going to look it up on my own damn phone. Fine. Fuck it. You know what? <laughs> what did it say? Blue beef, blue says, Elo, gusta, whatever. I don't know. Katrina says, Ro is so beautiful. Smiley face. No. <laughs> That's so sweet. Thanks, Katrina. You're so sweet. That makes me feel good. Yeah, here is Mike's post, finally. Who typed the last tweet from the DNR account? It's in gibberish. I'm guessing, Ro, please keep up the drunk periscopes. It wasn't me, I swear. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. All you right. know I never tweet from the DNR account because I can never figure out how to even do it. I'm too slow. I'm not so smart sad. enough. Romaine is not technologically savvy. I think it was an automated message that went out, and since we didn't set that this was in English, I think it default set to di a different foreign language. What the fuck? That's some crazy shit. You know what? We're still working on the technology of this. This is real. Yeah. Okay. Dwayne says, will we ever get to see Derek using the famous rapping station? Oh, God. What is that? You know what that is. Um, I will... Expressing my feelings. <laughs> okay, well, I will... I'll wrap a present in the future of some kind. Why not? I mean, I could give about five reasons why not, but uh, I won't. Okay. <laughs> um, no. Would you like me to give those reasons? Nobody cares. Somebody cares. They asked uh, about it. Uh, what do you need to see someone wrap some shit for? That's just lame. I don't know. He's not Martha Stewart. I mean, mm -hmm. I keep going if you want. You could, but then you'd just be a hag. What else is new? <laughs> Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Okay. I didn't mean to send this question up, but I clicked it and here it is. Wes says, do you think the community understands the full implication of marriage equality, including divorce, and I'm assuming common law marriages? Uh, yes, Wes, I do. I actually think people are uh, keenly aware. Now, just like with straight people, will there be some people who get drunk and get married and then 48 hours later regret it? Of course, because yes. there are stupid people everywhere. Uh, but I think that when you have people who have been waiting for decades to get married, yeah, I think that they understand very clearly. Or, like in Edie Windsor's case, are, you know, facing down a $363,000 tax bill because their marriage wasn't recognized. Yeah, I think they get the full implication of marriage, for sure. Agreed. Yeah. Uh, I, also, I also think that common law marriage will be a, um, will come into effect too, for sure. Okay, Chris in Pittsburgh says, where is Pittsburgh Chris? Why isn't he on here? Remember when he licked your face, Romaine? Oh, I remember that. Fucking gross. You don't forget something like that, Derek. No, you really don't. Ugh. Ronnie says, not a question, but I got a 24-hour timeout on Facebook for telling an anti-gay bigot to blow it out your ass. I don't know why they got so upset. I was just worried about the health of their colon. <laughs> okay, that's pretty fucking funny. Um, and I... <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, you know, Derek, I don't know about you, but I feel like the most... Um, there were some really funny responses online, on Facebook in particular, to this whole gay marriage announcement. But the ones that really kind of bothered me, even though they were funny, I was like, mm, people, should we really be saying these things? Were all the ones about the pastor that was going to burn himself alive? Like, does anyone smell burning pastor? And like, they had, there were so many different things about that particular guy. And I just kept thinking, oh, guys, no, no, this is so inappropriate. Funny, but inappropriate. Oh, people liked my tweet. What was it? 
I tweeted that he said he was going to set himself on fire, but then he changed his tune. So now only his pants are on fire. <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> yeah. And then earlier today, I tweeted about Donald Trump because he said he's uh, only in favor of traditional marriage. And I said, of course, Donald Trump is only in favor of traditional marriage. Uh, if you do anything a lot, it becomes a tradition. Hashtag <laughs> third time's a charm. Oh, those are good. Thank those you. Are very well thought out, Derek. I, I can appreciate those tweets. Well, not having to do three hours of material a day has left my uh, brain free to create a really good 140 characters. I like it. <laughs> oh, poor Trump. Apparently, according to several people, the tweet that we sent out was in Hungarian. Oh. Well, maybe it's for all of our Hungarian uh, fans, our fans in Hungary. Maybe. Speaking of, I'm kind of hungry. <laughs> okay. Well, don't worry. We are at the one hour mark, so I feel like we should wrap this up. Okay. Uh, we'll take one last question from George. George says, hi, Derek and Romaine. I love your show and commentaries. I would like to know what you think of people that listen to radio, why they listen to radio, and what kind of people listen to radio. Thanks. Um, okay. I think, I mean, I listen to radio all the time. I think that the people who listen to radio are people who, um, are, I mean, I think you're looking for something. I think that there's a certain thing you're looking for if you're listening, specifically talk radio, whether it's you're looking for an update on the world, what's happening. Maybe you have a very busy life and you don't have a lot of time to spend dedicated looking at these types of things. So sometimes tuning into the radio while you're driving in your car or you're listening at your, um, at your office while you're working, you know, the radio is this connection to the world that's happening around you. And, um, and I think the people who tune in are people who want to feel that connection, whether in our case, it's a, you know, I think people tuned in because they wanted to feel a connection to our community. Um, and Derek and I kind of provided that. And, uh, so yeah, I think that's, that's the kind of people who listen to radio, people who are looking to feel connected to one another or to bigger issues. Uh, I, think. Yes, I think that's lovely. Okay, uh, this got voted up 40 times. So Michelle's question is, how do you feel that a talk radio station replaced a 12-year icon with dance music? Well, look, I'm not happy that our show got canceled. I mean, I can't say I'm happy about that, but it was not our decision to make. And future programming um, on that channel or any other channel is also not our decision to make. So, uh, I, you know, I'm sorry if you're unhappy about it. It's not something that I chose. Uh, I would much prefer to continue to do our show and keep entertaining people as we have for the last 12 years. Um, and I wish that was the way that it is, but it's unfortunately not the way that it is. And that's the way life goes, kiddo. I don't know what to tell you. But, you know, I'm sad our show isn't there. And Me too. I, I'm, sad, I'm sad our show isn't there either. But the other thing that I will tell you is it doesn't even matter what would have been there. If what you wanted was to hear our show, you will probably be disappointed with whatever is there instead because it's not us. And, you know, before they announced, uh, well, actually, I'm because nobody announced anything, but before uh, the music replaced us, I asked people to give what's there a chance because if you are still a SiriusXM subscriber, you know what? Get the most out of your subscription. Give things a try. Nothing is going to be us, just like other things on other channels are not us. Uh, but you know what? <laughs> Life is full of new experiences. You have to experience them on their own. Um, and decisions are made by other people, and that's their job to make those decisions. And you know, I, I wish they had made a different choice, but I can't second guess them and the choices that they're making. But Derek, you're missing the most important word in that question. Icon. We're icons. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I finally have achieved something. By the way, did you see that I wore my freedom rings for um, Gay Pride Day? Woo. Oh, let freedom ring, lady. These are my brother Michael's. He gave them to me but when he died. Actually, right before he died. So every year I try to wear them for, for pride. They make me very happy. Well, that's very, very old. Anyway. 
All right. Well, uh, we've run out of time. I did not want to go uh, over an hour because people got things to do. I got to go to the grocery store and buy shit. I just did that. Ooh, so glamorous. That's how exciting Derek and Romaine's lives are when we're not on the air. We go buy groceries. Fun times. Woo! But yeah, people have been very concerned that our days are empty. I don't know about Romaine, but I have never been so busy in my life as I have been in the last 10 days. Oh, my God. Tell me about it. I have been so busy. I, 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 I don't even, like, yesterday I didn't even know what day of the week it was. And my friends are like, okay, fuck you. You don't even know what day of the week is. I'm like, you don't even realize. I've been very busy. I have a lot of things I got to do. Yeah. So Ooh. don't worry about us. We're busy. Yes. But, we got to find new jobs. Yes. We're very busy <laughs> finding new jobs. So uh, please uh, join us again here Sunday, 4 p.m. Eastern time, 1 p.m. Pacific. Um, there'll be a new link that'll go up here on our Google Hangout. If you um, have put us in your circles on Google+, Plus, then you'll see it there. We'll try not to send out our notice in Hungarian next time. <laughs> And uh, we'll also post it on uh, Facebook and Twitter. If you're watching this on YouTube because you missed it live, all you have to do to tune in is the link will be there active. It's just the same link. And you just go to where the screen is, and then it will show our video when it's live. But I will make another explanatory video for people. about Yeah, how I better watch it this time so that I understand how it works because even I'm confused. Great. But it doesn't take a lot to confuse me. We already know that. No, it really doesn't. No. <laughs> My bad. That's all right. Anyway, thank you all for joining us. Uh, please continue to subscribe to us on YouTube and uh, like us on uh, Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Thanks so much for being with us. Kisses to the bitches. Love you. Bye.